this is our report on special effects. Uh huh. In our movie, Kitzilla, we made a... In our project, Kitzilla, we made Kitty here <clears throat> look like a giant monster rampaging on the city. This was due to undersized props, such, such as, as this, this one. <sighs> Thanks to these undersized props, many movies have used these, <sighs> such as in Godzilla and King Kong. <laughs> Also, in other movies, uh, small things have been, have been made to look giant by using blue screen technique. Blue screen technology basically is the use of a primary color, which an actor wouldn't normally be wearing, to be played over by a computer image. Um, this is simply used because blue is a primary color, it's not common, and it's easy to overplay. Now we're going to talk about the movie Jurassic Park. In the movie Jurassic Park, the Stan Winston Studios um, designed, designed and built most, if not all, of the animatronic dinosaurs. Before building these dinosaurs, one fit scale model of all of them were constructed. And now, insert heads, hands, tails, and legs were used to portray the raptors in many scenes. Full body suits as well as animatronic raptors were used as well. <clears throat> the full scale animatronic T Rex was placed on a flight simulator during most of his action scenes. <clears throat> um, during one of his scenes in which it was raining, this was shot indoors, hoses with actually punctuated holes in them were run overhead. He was some, the movie had to be stopped every two or three minutes, and he had to be sponge dried in order for it to continue filming. The full size Velociraptor bodysuits that we talked about earlier had animatronic heads, which were actuated by cables connected to computers. The people inside these could not show their legs at any point during the filming, as the raptor's legs were triple jointed. Um, the Velociraptors were used in several scenes in which their legs were not shown, such as several in the kitchen. Um, as you all well know, with Lex hiding in the box, this was shots with animatronic raptors and computer graphics, actually. Go! <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know why I can't do this. My varying pattern of neutral tones recorded. <laughs> uh, the optimal soundtrack is a system of constantly varying neutral tones recorded photographically along the edge of the film. <laughs> The invention of the optical soundtrack afforded filmmaker uh, afforded filmmakers a more precise control over the relationship between sound and image, and also allowed for a greater complexity of sound and the ability to add more, <laughs> to add more expression to the sound or music. Whatever the character or its source, raw sound can be manipulated to achieve a more specific expression. Or si or in silent films, music was used to help form a mood or tempo of the action. Sound is basically used for de decoration in film. The 
soundtrack will take much, if not at all, of the dramatic tension. We'd now like to give some special thanks to the sources that we found our information is in Film, Space, Time, and Light. Um, we'd also like to give special thanks to the RCA Camera Company. Um, I'd like to thank the Jurassic Park, <coughs> the Jurassic Park crew for making a decent enough book for us to get the information out of. I'd especially like to thank my cat, if you can turn the camera over. actually probably done most of the work for this report. I'd like to thank my friend Eric, even though he was laughing for the better part of it. Please come on. Ha ha ha. Oh, that was a help. <laughs> anyway, um, once again, I thank my friend Eric. He was a big help in this. And I'd also like to give some credit to Andrew O'Connell, who helped us with the skit with the Cat Destroys Skitty, which we shall call Kitzilla. Yeah, I'd also like to thank movies such as Godzilla, King Kong, and Attack of the Green Fog. For coming up with this idea. For coming up with the idea for making these cheap B movies, which we could replicate. Good one. Now we're going to make a really cheap monster flip. We hope you enjoy. Two skits were thanks to our ATAT all um, all terrain and armor transport model, and us of course, and of course some leftover snow from last Wednesday. So I hope you enjoyed the skit. Okay, these are our closing credits. Special thanks to Eric Anderson, Zachary Hubbard, and Andrew O'Connell. Who um, um, Eric and Andrew both helped in the Kidzilla scenes, and also we're going to give credit to Eric for playing the um, monster in the original skit, which we erased. Um, and we also like to say thanks to the model company which built our ATAT. Also, I would like to give especially 99% thanks and credit to this film, Kitty Kidzilla. You all know her. Goodbye.